here we go. Okay, so greetings everyone. Welcome to the show Connect Africa. I'm very happy today to, to bring you Sister Aishiba Tafari and also okay. Ras Amha Slase here on our show. Uh, they will be sharing with us the different things that they are doing in Ethiopia and around the world as well. Just to say a little thing about them, Sister Eshiba, she's born in Vienna, she's from Austria, she studied political science and anthropology and African studies, uh, and also she has been living in the Rastafari way of life, I think, for the past three decades, I believe, and she has been in Shash for more than 20 years. Uh, she has been doing a lot of things in Shash, uh, she has uh, into uh, closing, uh, uh, the Rastafari closing uh, and accessories uh, business and also as a teacher and also as a community worker she founded uh, this NGO called the Awenta and also the Aradat in Meredaja. And our second guest, Ras Amhasilase, he's a, a professor of uh, public, soci he's a public sociologist and uh, currently he's engaged in opening up a cooperative grocery store. Uh, and also he's uh, uh, a lecturer, a professor in uh, Tinker Community College uh, in the USA in sociology. And they are both co-founders of uh, the Arada Tena Meredaja uh, Mahaber in Shashamane in Ethiopia. So I will just kick my question by uh, asking, what brought you in Ethiopia? Maybe you can say that quickly, you know, one is from your essay, the other one is from Vienna, why Ethiopia? So it's, it's good to make clear that out for our audience. Uh, perhaps, uh, yeah, you, uh, Sister Ashiba, you go first. And just to remind our audience, as Ras Amhasilase is joining us in Chicago while he's uh, connecting another flight to Ethiopia, so he hasn't got so much time. Uh, yeah, just to say that. <laughs> yeah, Sister Ashiba, you go first. Or? Okay, um, why did I come to Ethiopia? Um, as a Rastafarian, I read everything, I tried to learn everything I could about Ethiopia. It's the land of His Majesty, it's the Promised Land, it's uh, Zion on Earth to I, you know, the New Jerusalem. And I first came to Ethiopia in uh, 1994, 95 on a pilgrimage, um, following the Ark of the Covenant. And to me, that was a very deep spiritual experience. And uh, in 1997, I returned and then just decided to stay actually. And uh, partly because of the Rastafari community in Sheshamane, but also because, and increasingly more because I learned to love the country and its people. That's right. Okay, good. Ras Amha, so yeah, I understand you are not based completely in Ethiopia, like Sister Ashiba, but you are often here and there. So tell us what, how Ethiopia, why? Yeah, so um, I have been serving in the church for some years at the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And then, um, you know, I, I went uh, to visit and see everything for myself and, you know, just, just fell deeper in love with the, the Baha'u, the culture, with the, the way of life. Uh, I appreciated how, you know, in America, there's a distinction oftentimes between uh, spirituality and everyday life but mm -hmm. in Ethiopia it was all one you know like people were praying on their way to work you know like you would say Tenesalin was you know may God grant you health you know it's like it's just a way that everything is incorporated together that that uh drew me uh, deeper in so yeah and yeah, no, uh, maybe I can add this question. Uh, so you are, a, to make it clear, a Rastafari. You are living in the Rastafari way of life. And also you no, are I, involved in Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Yeah, I, I, I would, I, I, I wouldn't like maybe even make a distinction as much. You know, I would be like an Orthodox Rasta maybe, or, you know, like, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm rooted in the church, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm also Rasta because Rasta is a way of life, you know, it's not, uh, a religion per se, you know, it, it's a, a way of being and a way of interacting with others, you know, like I think for me personally, it's rooted in the notion of uh, one love and equality for all and and justice and uh, universal familyhood, you know, so um, 
yeah. So I, I, I don't make that type of distinction myself. Uh, I, I would understand, and I know you are not the first person to know that who was also in Ethiopian Orthodox Church and then also in the Rastafari way of life. Sam says that actually it complements each other, but some think that it would clash, for example, for most of Ethiopians, I think. Uh, so just if you can throw a light why it wouldn't clash, how you have it together, it, 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 would, be, it would be nice. Sure, you know, I I think uh, I, I think it's about being a follower of the way, you know, like he said in, in John uh, 13, the disciple is known by their love, you know, so, um, you know, if, you know, I follow the Mishaf Kadus, you know, I, 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 I seek to be a, a follower of uh, Jesus Christos, even as his majesty uh, was a follower as well, you know. So for me, um, it, it all it all lines up, and, and and it's almost like church and state, you know, when it comes to like how to really uh, uh, develop and and emerge uh, the kingdom of heaven on earth. Okay, uh, now we I will move so. You, you both are the co-founder of the uh, Arada Tena Merida Jamahaber. How, how did you meet and how did you launch this organization? Uh, oh, Ross, I'm okay. Isaac. Okay, oh, so we, st we still have time to board or are you have to board at any minute now? No, I, I, have, I have a couple more minutes. Okay, yeah. okay. So perhaps we will give him uh, the, the, the chance mm -hmm. and then, yeah, Sister Ashuba will say. Uh, I, I want to say we met, uh, I was there, it must have been like 2011 or something like that. Yeah. And it was the first time that uh, there was a celebration at His Majesty's birthplace in Erdusa Goro in Harar. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so we, uh, we, I think we met uh, at that time, you know, there was a big mm -hmm. celebration at the church there. And um, yeah, I think that's where we first connected. It, it, it was that trip. I can't remember if it was actually there or not, but it was that trip that, that we connected. And then I want to say, so I'm a community-based researcher, meaning that like uh, I try to walk with the community and understand what, what does the community want? Like, like what is it looking for? Like what is the environment that it wants to li work, live, and play in? And then like how can we leverage our resources together to make that happen? And so... Uh, uh, I want to say she reached out to me about a year or so later, and, you know, we started talking about, uh, you know, doing the community-based research project um, mm -hmm. in, in uh, Ethiopia, um, and then uh, while we were there, uh, while we were there, uh, like, kind of like my professor always told me that, like, you find your research or you find, like, things come to you. You know, and so while we were there, you know, some of the circumstances and conditions that that the community was under kind of informed and influenced uh, the direction that we went. And I'll let uh, Ashiva uh, uh, fill in some of the details from there. Okay. So, Sister Ashiva. Right. Uh, yeah, it's been a journey since then. As the brethren said, you know, there have been some initial things that we were working on and... I think one of the things that we realized is that in order to move forward as a community, there needed to be more organization, you know? So uh, I think a lot a lot of the initial work was into organizing the community, you know? We build up a board and uh, uh, transfer some skills um, to members of the community there. It's a community that is low on formal skills, let me say like that, you know? Um, so um it's 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 been an interesting journey it's still continuing and actually we're about to enter another phase jowling and i think the brethren also said that he wants to put an input uh while he's there possibly yeah yeah, <laughs> uh, <right. laughs> well, well, th yeah. okay thinking of your community engagement both of you you know while you mm -hmm. speak this to me and while we were speaking earlier what came to my mind is you know mostly uh I I, I always describe myself not really a, a full Rastafari 
person, but I, I always say I'm a quasi member of the Rastafari uh, community. You know, there are some things that I fulfill, there are some things I don't, but I definitely living in that culture. Uh, my husband is from there and my children are growing in that culture. Uh, but what, from my observation as an insider and outsider is, uh, the Rastafari community, I mean, from what I know, the one in Ethiopia, it's more of in itself, you know, it's like more of in its own inbox, in its own community, even that small community that we have in Shashamane uh, or in Addis is just confined in itself. And uh, you somehow, uh, uh, as opposed to uh, this, you are out of that box and you are tr uh, trying to reach the community and the Sister Ashiva for a long time from her uh, or the previous organization how did uh, like is there such a rule that you really have to be in your own community how did that why we don't see that more in the Rastafari community if you can share you can share yeah. your experience yeah I, I I think that's a it's a it's a good question slash observation and I, I think part of it is uh I think there's different phases you know where like when people first came to Ethiopia uh, you know, they didn't know Amharic, they didn't, you know, like they're trying to just establish and settle themselves. And so they may have stayed more insular, like to themselves, you know, but, but I think ultimately, you know, it's all one, you, you, you know, like, like if you're in Ethiopia, you have to move with Ethiopia, you know, and so it's like, uh, there's a lot of gifts and talents, you know, and going back to kind of what Ashiba said earlier, you know, like, oftentimes those that have been marginalized, they have all kinds of gifts and talents and they, they just need someone to walk with them and, and believe them to try to activate what they have, you know? And so to me, that's like this notion of collective hope, you know, where a community uh, identifies what it wants to do and then realize it has the power to, to, to make it happen. And so I, I, I think, uh, you know, I'm thinking in, in the Bible, it says that there's no more Jew, Greek and Gentile, but we're all one inside of him you know, and that there's one shepherd and one fold, you know, so it's like, to me, like, the distinctions of, like, only staying within, you know, one part of the community or one part of the body uh, is, 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 is what hinders us from actually leveraging our full capacity, you know, instead of, like, getting to know each other, getting to understand each other, and finding ways to, to cooperate together, so even, like, his majesty, he says, exploit all areas of agreement, Right. So like mm -hmm. if there's things that we agree upon, why aren't we working on those things together? You know, and there's things that we don't agree upon, then that's just what it is. You know what yeah. I mean? But don't let what we don't agree upon keep us from building deeper cooperation, collaboration, and coordinated effort on what we can do. You know what I mean? Because just imagine globally if if the Rasta community, which is all over the globe, and the Ethiopian community, which is also all over the globe, you literally like work together. You know what I mean? Like like what could happen, you know? And so it's like but to do that, I think we got to be the invitation, you know, because it's not by head knowledge, but it's by, you know, uh, he said that if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship together, you know, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all of our sins. So to me, it's like, like, how can I walk in the light? You know what I mean? How can I humble like, myself underneath the mighty hand of God that he can exalt himself in due time to us, you know, as we're rooted in love, you know? So I think the more that we, we focus on the Wangel itself and not like trying to pick it apart, that uh, the, the unity comes because it, it's on Memphis, you know, like, but Memphis and G, but how now Bertat idle them, you know? So it's like uh, how we uh, move out the way, you know, and, and be what, what God created us to be, which was one. Okay. Well, well said, well said. Uh, just maybe on this one to add Sister Aishiba uh, and then also for others, you know, to see that benefit. So it's over there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a thing. like, yeah, nine. Yeah, they move it. yeah, sorry. That's fine. Do you think that for the Rastafari community in Ethiopia, there's something that they missed by not engaging themselves uh, uh, with the community? Uh, uh, perhaps that kind of contributed, you know, for this full integration not to happen? Uh, what do you say? Speaking, you're speaking to I? Yes. Uh, yeah, well, I personally, I think that our concept of community should be the Shashamane community, yeah? not uh, only the Rastafari Shashamane community, that the Rastafarians in Shashamane should be part of a bigger community. Um, I think even within, to be 
a bit critical even about our efforts in 09 Kabbalah and the Aradat Ina. Um, if you take a community too small, then the set of skills that you will find and, and the, op the opportunities that you can create will be necessarily small. The wider you make it, and if you can get some cooperation in a bit wider, more diverse community, and the definition of community, as I understand it, is a diverse set of people living together, not the same people living together. Um, then you have more opportunities, you know. So it's it's really to leverage those um, skills that those very differing skills that exist in within Rastafari, within Ethiopian people, various Ethiopian people. So that would be the the goal to I, you know. And yeah. Yeah, I okay. agree with what Razama Selassie said. You know, um, I think a lot of it come came from initial contact and uh, you know i think a lot of things comes from misunderstandings based of on language and culture you know it takes time it takes effort um, um to to fit to fit in into a level to to adapt and to 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 grow together let's then say i think there's been some progress made and some uh, room for improvement, let me say like that. And me personally, I've always seen myself, I would like to contribute to to that improvement. If I... You know, if if I something if, that... Uh, okay. so I've had to ask something. That, so I appreciate yeah. what you said, Ashiba, when you said the concept of community, right? So like mm -hmm. uh, in sociology, there's a notion of um, imagined communities, meaning that mm -hmm. like uh, communities can be, you know, geographically based, they can be based upon certain identities, they can be based upon certain interests, like, you know, someone plays video games, and so they, they, they have a community of people that play video games, right? So yeah. I think part of it is reimagining, right, like, 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 yes. like ourselves as a community or expanding our we, you know what I mean, yes. to, to include yes. all of Sasha exactly. money, you know what yeah. I mean, and, and that, that I feel is like a calling. You know, because yes. it's like how, how we break down these walls and barriers, you know what I mean? That hinders the gifts and talents that are already there. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, how does the foot That's tell the fine. hand, I don't need you? You know what I mean? Or mm. the neck tell the leg, you know, I'm not interested in you. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, 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 like we hinder our own capacity. And, and God's like, you know, I already gave you everything. You know, y'all the ones that's, <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like y'all y'all the ones that ain't come together, you know? So like, how do we reimagine ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would very much underwrite that, sis, if, you, if I may say, you know, the, the, the bigger we, as the Brethren said, mm -hmm. you know, um, and yeah, to work towards that and uh, not, I, I do realize when I speak to my Brethren and sister in Shashamana, a lot of them say we have to solve our own problems first before we can engage in a wider society, you know, um, but as the Brethren very clearly pointed out you know it's really it's, it's it's keeping us from doing a lot of things that we need to be doing i think the better needs to move <laughs>
uh, the greatest thing that Ross could do, not only in Ethiopia, but on the earth, right, mm -hmm. is to live out the speeches of his majesty, you know, to, to, to follow uh, some of the guidance of like how to navigate in the, in, uh, in society, you know, as far as, you know, sporting all areas of agreement, um, uh, peaceful settlement of all disputes, um, international morality, uh, uh, education, you know, like, 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 these are all like principles that his majesty uh, uh, stu stood upon, right? And I, I, I think the more that, that, that we, we live the word, that the word works, you know, like, like if you live it, you know? Yeah, and so definitely. Uh, uh, I, I think that's the best example because that, that, that avoids the pitfalls of tribalism, right? You know, like, like, like you know, like, like what, what can we do to create African unity? You know, like, uh, what can we do to, uh, to, to, to end, you know, the vestiges of, of colonization and, and neo-colonialism and, and all of these things, right, that, that we're fighting against, you know, it's like, like we fight against each other instead of fighting against, you know, systems and structures that have imagined us as being lesser than all of us, you know what I mean? And, and what we can do as, as a people, right, to, to leverage our, our gifts and talents you know, un under the auspices of love and grace, right? To, to truly emerge the community that's already been set. It's already been finished. You know what I mean? Uh, he said that he sanctified a way into his presence, you know? Um, but we can't go in if, we don't, if we're not willing to give that same love that, that we so freely need and receive, you know? So, uh, so yeah, I, I think being, in, being an example, and I think uh, like, like Ashiba said, you know, there's, there's, so cultural misunderstandings, partly because of language, this, that, and other. So, you know, developing cultural humility, right? Which is like being willing to ask questions, you know, like, like uh, suspending judgment, right? Like, like uh, assuming best intentions, you know, like, like all these things, like, like how we build greater trust and stronger relationships, you know, amongst the, uh, the, 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 the entire community in Sashimani, um, in Ethiopia, et cetera, you know, like, like how we build bridges of trust you know, I mean, across differences, you know. Mm. It's that, a key point that you, you, you raised that to, to use our gifts and the opportunities that we have now, because the problem is, even myself, so much of us, especially with a Rastafari or a Pan-African person, we spent so much time fighting what happened before, you know, before it was slavery, now it's neo-colonialism and God knows what comes, you know, th there's always this big challenge that, you know, as long yeah. as we are not that powerful economically, those obstacles will be there. So when you say that, uh, okay, to, to, to use our gifts or to use the opportunities that we have. Do you think one has to stop uh, looking at uh, back and uh, how, like, can, can you just uh, okay, yeah, elaborate yeah. I, that I, term? I get you, saying. Um, you know, I think it's both, right? Because a people without the history, it's like a tree without roots, you know, according mm -hmm. to, to Marcus Garvey, right? So I, I think we need to understand our history to understand how we got to where we are now, right? And, and to learn the lessons. But I also think that it's building an alternative space. Like even now, like I used to spend a long time trying to fight against oppression, but now I want to be an Im imitation to the world that I want to see. You know, I, mm -hmm. if I want to see a world a certain way, I want to live out those relationships and I want to be that imitation. So build an alternative space so that, you know, if you have clean water and dirty water next to each other, then people can make the choice. You know what I mean? But like, like, like if we're not, walking in uh, a light that had that that is that is clear that is clean water then like we're hindering people from coming into uh, uh, the fullness of of what can be and so I, and I think it's also like challenging the underlying assumptions right they call it meta narratives so to me uh, are we are, are human beings independent or interdependent right like 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 mm -hmm. like, 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 like our nature you know, mm -hmm. uh, because I would argue that we're interdependent, you know, which would be like an African philosophy, South African philosophy, uh, Ubuntu, you know, mm -hmm. I exist because you exist and you exist exactly. because I exist and I can't be all that I can be until you are all that you can be. Or uh, uh, Martin Luther King would call it the single garment of destiny, right? But it's just those that I am because we are, right? And so mm -hmm. like, 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 it's a small shift but it's a big shift because then like, like, like your success is my success, right? Your well-being is my well-being. And it says it in the Bible. If you go to 1 Corinthians 12, 
You know what I mean? It talks about like, like how, like, you know, uh, when, when one suffers, we all suffer. When one has joy, we all have joy, right? So like, I, I think it, it goes back to what Ashiba was originally saying about like our concept of community, our concept of we, you know what I mean? That like, it has to be greater than just me. You know what I mean? And we got to work for something greater than all of us. You know, mm -hmm. like, like uh, if we're going to build uh, the trust and, and the, uh, the strong relationships to, to truly emerge uh, 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 a, a shared future um, that uh, out of a, a, a divided past. Uh, Sister Ashiba, I'll come back to you. Um, what are the... Uh, for example, now you are fully engaged in the uh, Aradat and Amadara Jamahaba, right? That's full time what you do when you are back in Ethiopia. Uh, it's not really a full time engagement at the moment, no. Um, it's going through its processes, yeah. It would be good, you know, for those of for those of you know who views and who don't know, even being in mm -hmm. Ethiopia, what mm -hmm. are you doing exactly, and what kind of help you are looking for? Tell us about more this uh, about Aradatina. Yeah. Um, it's really about, as the Virgin said, you know, to to empower the community to. Um, create a better life for themselves. One thing that I always think about, I think in an interview, His Majesty once said um, that his only purpose in life was to create better conditions of living for his people. Um, so that's a strong, uh, a strong saying, his only purpose in life. Um, and I think I think reading His Majesty's speeches, he always means that holistically, conditions of living, not just meaning close shelter, but also meaning education and uh, spiritual fulfillment. Um, so, uh, can you hear me still, I, I hear you, yeah, but still I hear the noise. Uh, you uh, are for sure boarding, Ras Amha, now. Uh, no, there's still... They're still hanging around. I just want to make sure. Sorry. I'll, okay, it's um, fine. So, I'll Sister Ashiba, back. continue. It's fine. Right. Where was I? Um, I kind of lost my thread. Can you help me? The community. <laughs> you are. You were talking about the community, and now uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. Right. Raising the standard of living of the people in a in a holistic way, you know. And I think that each of us have got skills and talents, uh, as well as weaknesses that we also need to acknowledge in um, humility. I remember when we started working in the, in the community, <laughs> I said to the people, listen, I have my own faults and I'm asking you to overlook them and to focus on the positive uh, that you may can get out of me. And the same way, I'm not going to look for your faults because what can I do with them? Um, but if I look for, for the greatness, for the, for, the, for the positive aspects within each one of you, then we can use them to work together. Right. Um, the the project has been interesting in that I didn't want to push too much because uh, there could be a tendency then that responsibility is thrown upon I being on the ground, um, whereas Osama Selassie uh, mostly was in America, so he's a bit exempt from that kind of pressure. Um, the community members would say, oh, Ashiba, you know what is good. You just tell us what to do. And that is not, not the purpose of the project. Um, and it's a phenomenon that happens all over the world, I think. And to, re to, really, um, to really shine their light, the community will have to themselves find a way because they are really the experts on what they need and what they, I don't know that. They just think, they just uh, project that upon me because maybe they see my education or my color or whatever they see. Um, to say you know better than us what it is that we need. Uh, so uh, it's been an exchange, an interesting exchange, uh, I have to say. In um, And I think this is also what the Breton said early on about um, challenging systems of oppression or systems, you know. Um, to me, speaking as somebody who has lived in Ethiopia for a long time, um, a tendency of government to um, tell people what to do and shut up and do what you're told to do um, is part of how I see life in Ethiopia, you know, and I think that um, 
when we early on we had a reasoning about Paulo Freire, for example, and um, uh, the aim of education being to develop critical consciousness. Critical consciousness is not sitting down, shutting up, and doing what you're told to do. So, um, to me, uh, this is also something that Rastafari generally, uh, us being people who are very much used to question everything and anything, um, have to share with the people of Ethiopia to maybe be more critical, maybe, um, you know, to, 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 more, to realize that, no, it can't be just one leader who is, who is going to save us from everything. It's we, the people, we, everyone, we, the people, the masses of the people that have to come together and create a better life for themselves. Um, and that's not easy. That's challenging. You know, I'd like to see a bit uh, the, the research part of it, a bit strengthening within um, uh, Areda Tina. I think that would be actually very much needed. It hasn't really reached that stage yet for various What reasons. do you exactly provide to the community? Uh, we started with, um, we actually started based on a certain need. We started with a community-based health insurance, right? Oh, okay. And um, that wasn't in existence at that time. So health being one of, health care is only a small fraction of health, actually. So um, we started with health care because access to health care wasn't, wasn't available for these very poor people either. Um, but now we're trying to widen it to um, social and environmental determinants of health and to work more on those in the sense of um, uh, strengthening social basis of power, uh, um, strengthening um, skills and earning abilities of people so that they then can build that community that they would like to live in. Um, this is something actually that I was quite happy about because mm -hmm. um, I remember a reasoning with the community where um, I said, but um, what is it that, that you need from all the things that you couldn't imagine? And they say, well, first of all, we need jobs so that we can earn money so that we can do all the things that we want to do. So mm -hmm. they didn't say, give me money uh, <laughs> to do this and that and that. But they said, we want to do that for ourselves, right? Mm, so we're still trying to find ways to, as the president said, leverage different um, um, funding as well as um, different uh, ideas uh, on how to do that. You know, um, I think you know, uh, working with the community has taught me a lot about um, when you study on the ground grassroots problems and how they connect with um, different layers of mm -hmm. uh, the organization of society um, with um, economic systems, with political systems, and um, they're all interconnected. So yeah. um, uh, critical consciousness would also... Um, would also um, involve that to be uh, to become aware for the whole community, not for me, for the whole community, and that happens within reasoning and within sharing, um, to become more aware of these connections and then to actually uh, be empowered to do something, uh, to speak out also against um, um, conditions that make it difficult for people. But we yeah the, more work needs to be done on that to be honest yeah i i, I still have more questions I could, that. i will I come back to you uh, yeah I, I gotta get going i apologize they're, they're, uh, i'm getting ready to board right. oh okay right. I, I was gonna throw this question to you but thank you very much for the time we had yeah okay thank you right. uh, and uh, hopefully and for sure we will meet again on a different subject yeah. i'm in i mean i look forward to that all, all right, right. Take care. okay have a, have a safe journey Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. That's the fire. Bye bye. 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 Bye.
can you because earlier also when you when we speak you brought this uh, term like health equity like having a health access mm -hmm. even people who are working you know being in this when i was in this so much of us when you are sick you just have to look for for your money otherwise th that's it you know you mm -hmm. it's not there's no this health insurance system that we know mm -hmm. in the west exists you know you always have to pay your your insurance mm -hmm. or you are covered by the government and then you know whenever you're sick they cover you uh, that's not available it's not in the system whether you are working or not at all so now for these people whose economic is really very low, who don't have a job, how do you create that uh, health access or health care to them? You know, you know, just uh, uh, tell us uh, more. Well, on the ground level, what we did was an insurance scheme, which was subsidized, however. That means people paid premiums every month, very small premiums, uh, money every month that goes into the common uh, pool and then um, whenever they need healthcare services uh, the money is taken out of that pool. Even that idea was new for the people at that time, the idea of an insurance. Um, the only thing that they knew was IDR, the mm -hmm. yeah. burial associations, which is a bit different because whoever pays into an IDR will get paid one day or the other because all of us die. But when you're a member of a health insurance, and pay into health insurance. If you don't get sick, you don't get nothing. If you get sick more, uh, you get more. And to have, um, in the beginning, I remember the people were saying, oh, that's not fair. And then we reason about it. And, you know, like a, a sense of collective security. This, this goes back to, you know, risk sharing, as we call it, or, or collective security. But um, I also have to say that, um, because we work with very poor people, um, this system has to be subsidized. And by the end of the day, to, to provide universal health care is something that only the government can do. So now, from my point of view, um, also um, what I learned about community-based participatory research and approaches, you know, uh, one thing that would be ideal is a bottom-up and top-down approach. I think both of them would be necessary. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, we did a bottom-up approach, a very ground-level basic. Also, one of the advantages of that was that the healthcare, well, the, 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 the um, health insurance was fully in communi community control. So the board who decides who gets money, who doesn't get money, is from the community themselves. I don't, I'm not even a member of the board, right? I, I don't have decision-making power. Mm -hmm. uh, I deliberately did it like that. Only mm -hmm. the members of, of the community um, are, uh, are uh, entitled to make decisions on that. I have, a, I have an advisory capacity. Uh, and I do some auditing, but um, I don't make the decisions. Um, so they control the money, and that is power, right? It's uh, yeah. a, a lot about a lot of community uh, community growing is about learning how to handle power, how not to abuse power, uh, all those kind of things, you know. So it's a big learning process actually for everybody, and I think um, especially the board has brilliantly grown into it actually you know I remember some very controversial um, but one thing I'm very proud of the community as well is um, that they managed to have weekly board meetings um, for an hour two hours every week and they always come up with solutions for problems you know without falling out or shouting or something like that I think that is brilliant you know um, yeah. most of the people are barely literate and really have very few formal skills and yet they managed to do that so um, those are the positive things. Um, uh, according to what you said, um, the government of Ethiopia, I, one, of, one of the inspirations for doing that uh, community-based health insurance, apart from the need, obviously, having been there, was um, that there was also a government plan already put out at that time when we started, which was in about 2015, I believe. It's about five years now. Um, to do such a thing, right? And that has been implemented by now. So you've been away from Ethiopia for a little while. There's yeah. health insurance now for employees, for formerly employed people. 3% mm -hmm. of your salary is taken away um, towards health insurance. 
and there's also community-based health insurance. So you that, are saying if I if you go to a certain hospital that you without paying anything you're gonna get. I mean, only in public private hospitals. banks do that. I know they have their own credit system, private right. agreement like um, Ethiopian right. Alliance, all the banks, all the insurance right. companies privately, right. but not right. with the government insurance company, which is the EIC, the Ethiopian insurance company. No. Uh, no, this is uh, the this is um, the Ethiopian Health Insurance um, Association. I think it's called. I don't remember exactly that. Uh, it it was established recently. Um, so I know. The, the, I remember the talk was there already, but yeah. it wasn't practical. Okay, by no, the it has actually been implemented, um, which I find very interesting. You know. Um, and because I study those kind of things, also I'm a social worker by um, training. I mm -hmm. went back and studied social work. So we also speak about systems and uh, social work. Anyways, uh, that's another story. Um, to, to really make impact on a lot of people, uh, you need to change systems, right? Uh, his majesty, all he did was building up systems that can work towards the people. You know, if you just give donations or help to individual people, you'll never get health equity, what mm -hmm. we were talking about before. You know, the only way you can try to achieve health equity is on, on a national level where people have rights, not just, um, uh, you know, it now moves out of an NGO and you apply to that NGO and they can either give you or not give you something. Um, but a government, if they write in a law under conditions such and such and such, you have the right to get that and that and that, then you have a right. So, so it increases the power of the people as well. So I, I, I think it is an important step. Um, what I would have liked to do and what I actually applied to the local uh, health authorities would have been to, to be uh, integrated into the process of setting up the community-based health insurance um, with our, and sharing our experience with the government who were new in that because they started several years after us. They only started a year ago really to provide services. Um, and uh, I, I see it personally as a positive step towards using universal health coverage. Um, however, there are many weaknesses and the thing is I went to them a year before they actually started and uh, said, listen, we have a project here that we've been running for years, basically something like what you're trying to do here now. We're willing to share our, all our experience with you and there's certain things we can see already are going to be the problem and we might, may even have suggestions how to solve those. Uh, but they didn't want to listen. And that is a bit frustrating, I would say, I, for, because he asked me what I personally do. Um, those are the kinds of things I would like to do. I haven't quite found the platform yet for doing that. As I said, I applied, I even wrote a project proposal and everything to the local health authorities in Sheshemane when Sheshemane became ready to start community-based health insurance. However, it's somehow moving forward. Uh, so when you work in that field, you, you get to see the strengths and the weaknesses of um, government systems. They don't only have weaknesses, you know. Um, I have been a patient in public health uh, um, institutions as well, and they do work for certain things. In some areas, they even work better than private, in my opinion. Um, mm. But there's definitely it's not a developed health system like in Europe, for example, and a lot needs to be done. And I think everybody's aware of that. Yeah. Uh, it will be for, for me like this is a must question that I have to ask okay. if I have a right. woman and a Rastafari <laughs> at the same time. Yes, uh, and even to make it more complicated and then you are from uh, Europe eh? you're mm -hmm. Caucasian or not or not African mm -hmm. uh, what is your experience uh, you know living in Ethiopia as a Rasa I mean it could be anywhere in the world you know as a as, as a woman by itself is already you know it can be a burden depending when you are uh, as a Rasta woman you know which I know uh, uh, the way I would say, I can say this actually out loud in this show. It's a very patriarchal system. The Rastafari is a patriarchal system. So mm -hmm. it's not always uh, easy for women 
uh, like uh, you or others who really are maneuver maneuvering and you know uh, uh, you know leading their life kind of independent how are you uh, it, it just asks uh, it, it, it requires those rastamen who understands you all even as a friend you know it's really hard so how do you navigate um as a woman, I would say maybe I've also been brought up to be quite self-confident and to not um, see my being a woman as a hindrance. I'm glad about that. I think I owe that to my parents mostly, I would okay. say. Um, I'm not in a relationship and I haven't been for most of my life. I haven't been in a relationship. Um, I've been in relationship with Rastaman, um, but most of the time I haven't been, so... Um, I avoid that subject in that way <laughs> to a level, right? Um, so I'm quite independent. I can do whatever it is that I want to do. Um, um, as a person not of African descent in Shashamane. And I think the being a Rastafari, yeah. As a Rastafari. Um, it's been challenging. And uh, I, let me put it like that. Uh, when I went back to Europe to study social work, um, I constantly clashed with um, my um, co-students or clashed, I wouldn't say clashed. I constantly had reasonings about racism, about black and white issues. And I realized that um, for most of them who had born and grown up in a white society, um, those issues weren't very much at the full, or they hadn't been reflected very much. Now, I think I've been forced to uh, reflect a lot of things and uh, look into myself and um, probably more than other people. That was not always easy. That was sometimes hard. Uh, I'm not complaining about it. I'm glad about it, actually. Um, I'm not saying that... Um, I have completed that journey. I don't think it's possible to. Um, I think that having, gro having grown up as a member of a majority in a, in a racist country, um, everybody imbibes racism to a certain level. The only thing you can do is to try to be conscious of it and to consciously and, and actively um, work against that. As a Rastafarian, I also think that you cannot be a Rastafarian. Uh, without having the interests of African people at heart and the okay. interests of Africa at heart. Um, so I know a lot has been talked about allies. I wouldn't call myself an ally of Rastafari. I do live Rastafari. Um, it's more than that. Again, uh, Paulo Freire, he, he talks about, it's quite interesting, he doesn't talk about black and white, he talks about the oppressor and the oppressed. And he says... Um, it has always happened throughout the centuries that mem certain members, few members of the oppressor class have switched over to the side of the oppressed. Um, and there's a price to be paid for that. You know, you can do that uh, just um, throughout a look or talk talk, or you can actually walk the walk, right? Um, and my my journey or what I am aspiring to is to truly uh, walk the walk um, on by the side, you know, walking walking with black people towards liberation, you know, um, in an anti-racist and um, and um, anti-oppressive kind of context. So to what level I've achieved that, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but um, that is a journey. So I, it's a journey. Uh, it's one where I've been challenged many times because I live in a black supremacist um, community in Cheshire Um So yes, my, my whole existence has been challenged. My identity as Rastafara has been challenged. And it's okay. I can live with that. Um, but the term black supremacy, it, you know, it creates ambiguity. You know, black supremacy for me, I mm -hmm. accept it or I interpret it as mm -hmm. black supremacy being accepting black is the origin of everything, not really mm -hmm. black. It's mm -hmm. totally different from black superiority, right? Mm -hmm. 
Are yes, you on I, that yeah. line? Is that what you I, mean? I would, especially for people who don't know the term, uh, it is very different from white supremacy, which is a racist movement. Um, I, I'm one of those people who hold that there's no such thing as reverse racism that doesn't exist because of the power structures. To me, the definition, a simple definition of um, racism would be prejudice plus power. And since um, worldwide power structures are still, unfortunately, and need to be mm -hmm. overturned uh, in a way that people of European descent are on top and others are not on top. Uh, such a thing as reverse racism doesn't exist. So, um, yes, um, prejudice exists everywhere. Uh, that one you have to live with. If you have to imagine also, I'm a person who is visibly not Ethiopian. There's no way I can pretend. You know, I can speak Amharic as well. I do speak Amharic fluently. Um, I can speak Amharic as well as I want to. I can dress whatever way I want. I, I can never fit in, right? That is one thing that I also had to learn to live with. I cannot blend in in Ethiopia, never ever. I always stand out and everybody stays with me, right? And I've been asked one zillion times, where do you come from? Oh, you speak with Amharic and so on and so on, you know? Yeah. Uh, you have to accept that. Otherwise I can't move to a country where I look so different, you know? Um, as a Rasta person, I, I don't fit in here either, but I could. Theoretically, I could cut my dread and dress like everybody else, and then I could, you know. But also, so it's it, like, I, I feel like it's a double standard, but uh, you are also different when you are in Europe, for example, where you come from in Austria. Yeah. You're different from the rest of the people, right? Having a dreadlocks and... Yes. Th do you ever I'm feel saying. like, okay, I mean, you need a special place to be in, to fit in? Um, I very much feel at home nowadays, and it took me a long time to reach there, honestly. I do feel at home in Ethiopia, in Shashaman okay. in particular. I'm, and I'm one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons is because I really enjoy, this is something that personally gives me pleasure, to be able to move between the cultures, to move between Rastafari, I, I would say about half my friends are Rastafarians and half my friends are Ethiopians, and to move between the languages, between the cultures, and uh, move quite freely between them. To me, that is a huge joy, I have, to, I have to honestly say. And I really like that. I like to bring my Rastafarian and my um, Ethiopian friends together as well. Okay. Um, a lot of them don't know each other because of the language barrier. And uh, yeah, those, um, I really enjoy that. And it took me a long time, as I said, the funny thing is after I left for a little while, I left Cheshire for a little while, came to Europe, I was very unhappy here, missed Ethiopia terribly, and then went home. And all of a sudden I felt much more comfortable than I ever had before, you know, with Ethiopian people, you know? So I don't, I still don't quite over, something must have changed within me, I don't think. Uh, the people of Shashamane in particular have changed. So I think I have changed and that's good. And it's still a journey. And um, I'd, I'd like to also be a part of, um, you know, a link. Um, uh, I think more links are needed. We spoke earlier on about connections between um, the Ethiopian and the Rastafari community um, or imagining a wider community then. Um, and I'd very much like to be part of that. I'm trying to be a part of that in small ways and hopefully also in bigger ways. Connect Africa! Yeah. In the uh, I, I think I really have to bring this to my audience here at Connect Africa. I mean, you have been for the past 20 plus years, I think to be exact 23 years mm -hmm. in Ethiopia, uh, you have been moved from one profession to another and to another. For example, first you started with uh, the Rastafari clothing and accessory, producing that, you know, uh, yeah, even if maybe it's in a, in a small scale, but you were producing clothes, yeah, sewing clothes to be specific. Uh, and then after that, I see uh, uh, the Yawenta uh, children, the orphans uh, who lost their parents uh, in HIV. Uh, and also then after that, you moved again to, now I found you here with uh, the Arada 
in a maradaja and you want one key thing that you said was you purposely don't want to be in the decision making or you kind of put off that uh, burden put off but still be you are engaged in terms of you know contributing what you have you have to contribute Okay. what like is, is there is a pattern you know like you kind of you want to deliver something and then after a while you you are going to a next and then after a while you're... for me i see a pattern in it you do that deliberately or it's things are forcing you uh that's a good question <laughs> um i think my life runs in circles in, in in cycles in certain cycles and they do move me from place to place from time to time I try to see it as growth and I do want to grow and to move forward. Uh, sometimes that growth moves quite easily and sometimes it moves in a more rocky hmm. manner. Uh, let me say like that. Right now is one of the more rocky periods. Um, however, I've learned through hard experience that it is the hard experience that we learn more from than actually the smooth parts of our life. Uh, Yaunta was, uh, was my life for seven years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would never regret having done that. It was a lot of work. It was very tiring. Um, and I've learned tremendously. It, be it become, well. I think one of the things, by the way, don't forget your point, that when you Google about Shashamani, I think Yawenta okay. comes together now. So yes. You, you um, really, you have to be, yeah. Proud. It was really through the grace of Ja because I, I have to honestly say, you know, I jumped into that. I didn't have a cent to my name. Um, I didn't have any experience in project management. Uh, you know, uh, I had people helping me, of course, um, um, Ethiopian people as well as Rasta people. But uh, it was very challenging and I've learned a lot. I've, I've made a lot of, um, I've, 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 I've been able to meet a lot of people, both children and parents and teachers. I, I really, I really have to give thanks. You know, it's only recently, for example, I reconnected with some of my co-workers during the sewing period. Um, that was a long time ago. That's like, oh, it's like, 15 years ago. That's how I knew you for the first time when Ras was oh, yeah. Ras Kintasab, now the elder yeah. and the Rasta uh, community in, in Shashamani. He was introducing me from people, you know, in, in the neighborhood, in the Rasta community. So that's, uh, this, mm -hmm. she's the one who produces our clothes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was good. And then it was time to move, you know, okay. and to move forward. And I have to say also, you know, um, uh, when I stopped young, I, I, really my heart was bleeding. I found it hard to let go, but I, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to complete my education. And I still think that Ja has things in plan for I, and I'm working on um, new challenges. Um, I'm somebody, I do like challenges. <laughs> so you're um, moving to the next one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm moving to a next one. There's a few ideas. I'm not quite sure yet. I, I'm leaving it in the hands of Jai as well to see which ones of those plans might work out. Yeah, but uh, I, I also Knowledge. have plans from time to time. And I think mm -hmm. part of it is it's it's what makes life meaningful, you know, then you right. give it a purpose. Otherwise, right. what's hope? Like the a routine life, you work, you bring income, you mm -hmm. eat. I mean, it would be the same. Yeah. You have to have those yeah. kind of yeah. initiatives that you can give back to the yeah. community, especially yeah. living in a place like mm -hmm. in Ethiopia. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of you. I'm, you're doing a great job. I Thank admire you. you. You really, your inside out, beautiful and uh, continue and i pray that uh, you know ja guides you to 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 change to implement what you are uh, what you are thinking uh, and hopefully life. i will be able to speak to you or to work with you uh, uh, in, in that, that journey um, that would be uh, so finally i want to show this one uh, what do you advise for people who wants to come, to, who want not to come actually, to repatriate, you know, to Ethiopia, who wants to call mm -hmm. Ethiopia home, you know, who are still uh, in the West, uh, in the Caribbean, and, mm -hmm. you know, don't know what, they're not sure, and because of also what's uh, 
coming out of news. Uh, it's just not a fake news, but what's happening uh, really in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. What do you advise, you know, what you tell that? Okay, to me, um, right. Uh, I think it's good to be uh, realistic in the sense that uh, I think for anybody to come to live in Ethiopia, it's good to visit first, to just see if you like the place, you know. Um, I would advise people not to put too much ideology because a lot of times when we use ideology, uh, the reality doesn't match up with it. And then we're disappointed. I think you'll fear best if you have as open a mind as possible, because, because Ethiopia is beautiful, its people are beautiful. Um, and there's a lot to learn and a lot to discover and a lot of opportunities, but they are just different and you really have to have an open mind. Um, if you're gonna say, this is how it's gonna be and, and this is how I want it to be, you're most likely gonna be uh, disappointed. I think when it comes to material things, uh, it's important to have more than one leg to stand on, um, to be flexible again, you know, um, and uh, yes, to be ready to learn, um, not just, we, we always talk about what the, do Rastafara have to give to Ethiopia, Yes, it's also about giving, but I, I'd be a bit careful as well because some of us come, come in a little bit like missionaries, you know, like, oh, they're the poor savages that we have to, you know, it, that can't work. Yeah, uh, that will not work. Um, you have to learn as much as you're able to share. You won't be able to share anything if you're not ready to learn. Um, so uh, to, to, to see people as people, you know, and not, neither as glorified oh the, the blameless Ethiopians or something like that. One thing I've learned in my life, I, I'm going to be 50 next year. I, I've had the opportunity to travel a lot. <laughs> I'm going to have a party. I hope you'll come. Um, okay. I don't have parties really often, but every 10 years I'll have a you party. You have to celebrate. Uh, yeah. I will. It's going to be an idle party with no alcohol and no, you know, no, nothing I nasty. I look forward to that one. But I'm going to have a party. Um, job willing. So um, one thing I've learned through my travels, through my life experience is on the one hand, uh, people are the same everywhere. I think people everywhere want a better life for their children. They want to be happy. They want to um, have a fulfilled life. Um, and on the other hand, everybody is different. You know, you can't say the Ethiopians are like this and that. Every kind of... Um, generalization, you're going to find many, many, many exceptions, you know, the same as not all Austrians are the same and not all whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So both of those things are true. And then um, still, you know, um, to have more, to, to look at people and see the value in individual people. For that, the language is very crucial. I would encourage everybody and including my brother and sister who live in Ethiopia already. I know it's difficult for many ones, but it's it opens so many horizons when you when you speak the language. You know, I I, mm -hmm. I could not imagine I could not do none of the work that I've been doing and um, I could not I wouldn't have half my friendships if I couldn't speak Amharic, then you're very limited, you know, in who you can have relationships with. So you, so then you end up picking friends based on what language they speak and not based on their inner qualities and you know and their you know how you normally pick friends mm -hmm. then brethren sister in you know so um yeah the same maybe for brethren you know like if you if you're going to have a relationship with a woman you know it's like just be a normal human being just not this you know, there's a lot of ideology um, because she's Ethiopian. She's going to be like this and that and that. No, you know, I know many Ethiopian women and they're all different, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, each has their own character. And just because she's Ethiopian or she's from this tribe or that tribe, you can't say she's going to be like this and that and that. You have to get to know people. So, and language is crucial for that, I would say. Um, uh, so, but... 
Yeah, um, and when it comes to the challenges that the country is facing at the moment, there are many. I'm very concerned about them personally. Um, I just look at it if it's a country that you love. Um, it's not that I don't see the challenges or the difficulties or even the, the, the horrible things that are happening nowadays in Ethiopia. It's not that I'm not worried about it, but the only thing I can do is try and make it better. You know, what are the rules that I can play towards making it better? And to I maybe if I could still say that as Rastafari, not being one of the tribes, as such, we're not really a tribal um, movement, you know. Um, it gives us an opportunity to maybe step in between the lines and say, you know, again, as the Bredgen said, or also Rasaman Selassie said, um, avoid the pitfall of tribalism and, 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 and uh, um, encourage people to work together as people, as Ethiopians, um, as human beings, you know, um, and so that we realize one day what His Majesty talked about, the dream of world citizenship, you know. I know we're far from that, but we have to strive, right? So, um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I want to remain hope. I mean, hope is really what gives me life, literally. Yes, I Yes, I That's it. And in now in these times, strange times that we all are prison. I, we, I think we are just in a modern prison. Mm. or modern prisoners you know you're you're yeah. not in a jail but you are in a, in your house you, yeah. you there are a lot of things that you are limited so mm. um uh anything that you want to say to the viewers you know for anyone you know who is uh, who's gonna see this video how if they want to help if they want to engage in the in the initiatives that you're doing in the project how they can contribute you can also say something well um i don't know how relevant that would be i mean we do look for uh funders for a project that uh, for um aradat ina is going into uh we're going to provide a small starting capital for small entrepreneurship um so we're talking about five thousand per each which is how much for each um, person or, or per each person. household uh, well, it's more a household kind of thing. So, um, for but for one project, basically, um, up to you know, based on a on a business plan that we're gonna work with the community on. These are people who do have skills, um, but um, very little access to capital uh, to realize uh, even small projects that they may have, so to sustain themselves, and. Uh, we decided not to do that in form of a credit system, which um, those exist already, microcredit uh, systems exist already, but the experience has shown and research has shown that for the poorest of the poor, really the microcredit ends up in a, in a debt spiral. You know, they can never get out of the debt because um, the jobs that they do, the, the, the profit that they can expect is so very small that it's really only to survive and not to pay back uh, credit. So they can never get out of the credit scheme. Um, so we're going, we're going to try to provide small starting capi capital uh, incentives uh, for individual members of our Mahabar. Um, so that they can start a business and we'll so follow what they can do is the, the easiest thing will be I'm going to put below this video a link mm -hmm. whatever is easier for you to contact you and you know wants to know more about it yes, so I will put yes, a I. link and then they will contact you I think that's that much easier yes, uh, and thank you very much I'm very happy that I have you here and also both to Ras Amha I, and I learned a lot and uh, uh, there's always I'm sorry that he had to go go early. I, I know he has a lot, but I mean mm -hmm. it's good. It's it's even mm -hmm. good that for the time that we had him for uh, mm -hmm. half an hour, probably we had him here. Mm -hmm. it, it was mm -hmm. really nice uh, to for him to share what he has. You know, kind of open doors also. You know, for others to know there are search Rastafari people who are working hard regardless of gender. You know, people are working really hard to make. 
to make the world better, but just you start from a family, from a community, like just like what you are doing now. So mm -hmm. I'm really thankful and I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, to, to share this story also with others that I use this platform for such things. So thank you very much for your time. And I hope we will be able to talk again with, you know, to get updates or on your next uh, project, right? Yeah. And give thanks for the opportunity to speak to you and use that platform. Give thanks. You are sis. most welcome, and sister. More strength for that. That's a positive move. Yes, I. You are most welcome. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you who are, who subscribe to my uh, my channel, I thank you very much. And uh, and for those of you who didn't, please uh, be part of this family, Connect Africa. We bring here on this platform to discuss anything about Africa, Africans. Uh, also non-Africans, uh, but who are doing something in Africa or about Africa, uh, both from home and from the diaspora. Uh, and if you like it and if you find it interesting, give it a like and then share it with others. Just spread the word, you know, uh, spread the word. That's the most important thing. I mean, we somewhere, you know, somehow we, we can, we can uh, inspire someone. That's, that's the goal. Uh, thank you, Sister Ashiba. Thank you, Sister Malet. Bye. 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 Thanks. Okay. Connect.